up, y'all? It's Kimmy Coco, your host of Connecting the Dots podcast. Me, Dom, and Jay Black welcome you. And we are here today after a long hiatus. Happy New Year. We all late. But Happy New Year, y'all. We are getting back into it and back into current events and these discussions. Feel free to join us at CTD underscore ATL on Instagram. Follow our YouTube page. And I've seen a lot of things. And remind me to tell y'all something about that later. Um, Connecting the dots on YouTube and Innovative Black Station. You will find us wherever you look for us at. Um, so let's get into it. So a lot's been going on um, the last week or so. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me was the Ahmaud Arbery case. So we have an update, okay? On Monday, January 31st, federal judge rejected a plea agreement with the Justice Department for Travis McMichael, 36, and his father, Gregory McMichael, 66, Two of the three white men facing hate crime charges in the killing of Ahmaud Arbery after his family expressed fierce opposition to the deal. It was a surprising twist in the case, which 25-year-old black man was chased through a southern Brunswick, Georgia neighborhood by three white men and then shot to death. The plea deal would have been the first time that any of the men had admitted that Mr. Arbery's killing was racially motivated, and that they did. Mm. At the point where they accepted the guilty plea, he had to say he did what he did because it was he was black. And that's what happened. Mr. Arbery's family angrily objected to the federal plea agreement because it would have sent Travis and George McMichael immediately to federal prison instead of state prison for up to 30 years. So if you know anything about prison, mm-hmm. you know that the federal prison is the lenient, more lenient. The yeah. more lenient, they call it like a, you know. A long control vacation. A vaca- <laughs> it's not as strict as the state. So just know that if you plan on ever going to jail, you might as well do a crime that's going to send go you to the big. feds. Yeah, don't go, go to the Go state hard thing. or go home. <laughs> because go if, you get, if you get a state charge, you go into the state prison. If you get a federal charge, you get federal time, which is usually less time. It's more concrete it, time. Yeah. You got to do all of it. But you're made more comfortable because that's usually the crimes that the rich people commit. Right. Um, Mr. Arbery's family angrily objected to the federal plea because he would have gone to federal prison. Um, I'm asking on behalf of his family, on behalf of his memory, and on behalf of fairness that you do not grant this plea in order to allow these men to transfer out of Georgia state custody into federal prison where where they would prefer to be, said Wanda Cooper, um, Ahmaud Arbery's mother, as if she hadn't already been through enough. She has to continue to go through this. Prosecutors had hoped that the plea deal for the McMichaels would guarantee that the men would face serious prison time for the death of Omar Arbery, even in the unlikely possibility that their state murder conviction were overturned on appeal. Their federal sentence would have run concurrently with their state sentence, I was wondering that, or life without the possibility of parole, the deal would have also barred the men from appealing their federal um, guilty pleas. Hmm. This is all from the New York Times, y'all. So, the judge rejected it. Yep. And it's not happening, but we did get a confession out of it, right? <laughs> Ideally, yeah. Um, it, it, it's very interesting, I think, especially here in Georgia. If you've been following this case, you kind of know how important it is to not only Georgia but that community uh, up in Brunswick. Uh, it looks a lot different from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, even if that means anything to you all. Um, so, so the energy there, the the this this case. Um, it, it's, it's almost everything to these people and, and for the pain that's happened with his family, um, for his mother to even have to plead for, you know, this not to happen. It just kind of shows a, a, a boldness that you will see in places like Brunswick. Um, and as we stated, even from the beginning of this, this case where, you know, city officials tried to cover it up and, and, and help, you know, it not come to light. Um, it, should, it should just show you, you know, the things that are happening in this case. And that's what made me so happy to see the judge uh, reject this. Because when I woke up, I think it was Monday when I woke up and I, I kind of seen the, the the rumors of this. Uh, I was definitely hoping that the judge would strike this down. And I'm very glad to see that. he did. did. Yes, yeah. me too. I, I was like, a, what? It's a, it's a huge step in our fight for justice. Mm-hmm. You know, because right. we've been seeing the system go against us in a bunch of different cases. Yeah, and for them, like you say, the judge. I mean, I'm you know the McMichaels. They exercising their rights as Americans, like right. you know to they to have that option, that yeah. option. But for the judge to shut it down after all these cases we've been seeing over the years with cops getting off, people getting off, and it, you know, I think it's just yeah. a huge step. It's what made step. me nervous was the fact that this this law mm-hmm. wasn't even in effect when the crime happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, is that they gonna could fight that? Yeah. Like, yeah but 
you know. But it worked. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, I, I definitely think this is something that we'll all be following because it, it, here in Georgia, this is kind of must-see news. I think this is kind of like the case. This yeah. case, and let me bring up another case really quick. Yeah. Um, Kendrick, Johnson. Kendrick Johnson. Yes. Yeah. Um, they reopened the case. <laughs> Recently, the sheriff in Valdosta offered $500,000 of his own money if anyone could bring any information up about the death of Kendrick Johnson, if you remember, um, he was murdered or... This is a young man they found <laughs> rolled up in He the, was found rolled up in a gym mat. They said that his death was an uh, accident, but um, that's been questioned. Um, Kendrick Johnson's family called Lowndes County Sheriff Ashley Park a liar last week when he said that he found no foul play in the 17 year old's death. Mm -hmm. um, he put up 500,000 of his own money for any information leading to the arrest and conviction. Um, Johnson's body was found inside of a rolled up gym mat in Lowndes County High School in Valdosta in 2013. Local and state investigators determined the death was accidental. Um, there's a, been a three year federal probe, but it could not provide a definitive conclusion about how the teenager died. Mm -hmm. But that's because there's been so much covering up. It's been almost 10 years. And yeah. um, according to his family, that's because everyone from the sheriff to the, the principal of the school is involved in the cover up. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. Including the kids, uh, yeah, the yeah. suspects, a family who right. is an FBI member also. Exactly. So Johnson's parents have refused to believe that their son fell into a mat. Like, I, I get it. Um, they insist he was killed by three classmates, mm -hmm. two of whom are brothers. Sons of a former FBI agent to Dom's point. The killing was covered up by Lowndes County officials acting at the behest of the former FBI agent. The family argued in a lawsuit that has been dismissed. Yep. And that's the part I want everybody to hear. Lord have mercy. Dismissed. The same cat, the same, this case captivated a small South Georgia community. So when Paul returned for his sixth term as sheriff, he reopened the case. Hawk wasn't in the job when Johnson died. A lot of people said that they felt like it needed lo looking into. So last week, I just wanted to know the truth. The public needed to know the truth. So I tried to break it down into a very simple format where people could, after 14 months of pouring over 17 boxes, they released a 16 page report addressing specific rumors and questions about the case. And still, the Johnsons are not convinced. Over the weekend, the, the family gathered. Um, they had a Facebook live stream, and they're still looking for answers. So God bless them. I, I wish them the best, and I hope that we get some answers on that. And I think this is even a strike to what we were saying earlier about Brunswick. Um, cause South Georgia. Yeah, and, and the Kendrick Johnson uh, case happened in Val Valdosta. Dosta, and, Lowndes County. Yeah, yeah and, and so I, I want people to really realize, like, once again, how different South Georgia yeah, is. How yeah, how different uh, North Georgia and South Georgia are from Atlanta. Um, yeah. When I We're first, a blue dot and a red. Yeah, when, when yeah. I first moved here, uh, one of my friends told me to, you know, when you leave Atlanta to remember that you're in Georgia because yeah. it's totally different spaces and mm -hmm. it's a lot of stuff that goes on uh, in these small towns. And, and not saying that nothing goes on in Atlanta because there's plenty that goes on here, but it's just a different energy. Uh, with racism, with uh, oppression, with uh, equity in these places. Um, so you really have to, to, to I, I think this Kendrick Johnson case is a slap in the face, like, you know, because this young black man got found rolled up in, the, in, in, in a mat in the high school gym. Somebody knows something, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, and I think this is a thing that so many people um, of color in this country talk about. I know? mean, look at what happened with Amal Arbery's case, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody from the prosecutors that was convicted. Yeah, she's a convicted. Yeah. To the, uh, the McMichaels, mm -hmm. who were a part of the police force at one time. Right. Everybody was in cahoots with everybody. So it's not hard right. to believe yeah. that it's possible that this could happen somewhere, right? Yeah. Because, like you said, in these smaller towns, mm -hmm. They have um, legacy jobs, right? right? Like your dad was a corrections officer, your grandfather mm -hmm. was a cop, you know, your uncle is the the judge. The judge. Town, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So these small communities, like you said, once you leave Atlanta, it's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind, people. Right. Um, so another thing that happened here in Georgia and everywhere else in the country, um, HBCUs, they were receiving bomb threats. 
Yeah, you guys hear about the, that? Yeah, all throughout the country. Yeah, HBCUs were threatening to get blown up. On the first day of Black History Month at that. Let that sink in, people. February 1st. Well, all Black History Month. We're only six days in and they've been <laughs> right. <laughs> the pa- this past Tuesday, February 1st, the first day of Black History Month, around 17 HBCUs across the country received bomb threats. Whew. The FBI said it was investigating the threats as racially or ethnically motivated violent extremism and hate crimes. Mm-hmm. The FBI has identified six juveniles as a person of interest in a series of bomb threats that targeted historically black colleges and universities, a law enforcement said on Wednesday. Quote, a lot of us feel like this is political. There are people out there who don't like that HBCU support the excellence of black people. But to threaten us is just too much. Joyce Dehe, 19, a freshman at Spelman College. Um, so, <laughs> isn't it exhausting? Head. It's <laughs> right. just so exhausting. The only thing we want to be is left alone. It's like, just so, can I just go to school? Like, what the fuck, bro? We don't ask for much. We just want to be educated. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? <laughs> I just want to live my little black life, mind my black live my business. Black life? What the fuck? Yes. Do you know what terror terrorizing is? Terrorizing is not like, of course it is. You know, come blow up something, whatever. But the mental and the just emotional anguish, yeah. anguish and exhaustion, mm-hmm. like a bomb threat. Like, you don't know what... And then not only did they say they were going to bomb the place, they said they were going to come shoot up the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what that does to me? Like, I just want to study. But, you know, there might be somebody that walks up in here soon and shoots us up. So, like, I I can't concentrate now. Right. Not to mention the fact that I live here. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know. It's, it's, once again... FBI, (laughs) the Department of Justice, like, do something with these domestic terrorists, please. That's all I'm asking. And Do something. They're always investigating something. Yeah. They're always looking into something. Do you ever get to the bottom of anything? <laughs> hey, they still ain't figure out who killed Tupac and Biggie. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know how much hope we got. I mean, the my goodness. It, the authorities time. have so far not described any of the threats as credible, but school officials as at many of the universities took precautions, such as sweeping campus buildings and moving to remote instruction. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's you know my prayers for all these students at all these <laughs> schools um protection um because I, we live in some wild times man <laughs> and, and, and not to even say that I, I think this is the point where we realize that america hasn't progressed as much as we would like to think uh, well a, yeah a lot of people yeah you know, well I, everyone's political stance is based on mm-hmm. race now races, yeah i and, mean because the, the the politicians that are running really have no uh, not all of them some of them, the ones that are pushing race, mm-hmm. are doing that because they have no real agenda. Right. So the only thing that they can um, rally people around is racism, because yeah. everybody can be racist, right? And that's the thing too. Like, you just made me think about it by saying that, like, that they rallying around races because it's black people that don't agree with other black people. Yeah. But we can all agree that we going through this struggle together. So it's like, all right, you got me. Mm-hmm. But I think that's a that's a lazy tactic that they using, but that's what they're using nowadays. Like and, and, it's provocative. Yeah, and just like you said, we we know that uh, it, it's kind of, and, and not to sound insulting, but we have a lot of uneducated and ignorant politicians right now, and they're pandering to other uneducated and ignorant people to build their base. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've seen that in, in, in a few places here in Georgia, where what's the lady's name? Uh, from North Georgia, I don't know why. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene. You got the the Vernon Jones of the world, and, and like not to personally insult them, but you have we have. I'll to, insult them. Yeah, no. If we this is just a real conversation. If we want to have these conversations, we have to without be, insulting them. Yeah. Okay. W- because I won't. like you know, <laughs> but um, I, I think these people know um, where the control lies in politics right now yeah. in the sense of that's the only reason uh, uh marjorie taylor green can win mm-hmm. she also ran on the polls which i don't think i had in the game but yeah at the same no because she already has two people running against her yeah but we have to very much realize the, the aim of these politicians right now on one side of the playing field um 
Man, it's going to be an interesting... But if more people, like you said, it's, it's definitely because of their ignorance, but if mm -hmm. more people realized that regardless of your <laughs> your race, your... Uh, <laughs> Your economic, economic situation. <laughs> I say class is your really class. the bigger thing. Like uh -huh. everything falls like under class. Like you're gonna vote for against something that would help you because it would also help black people. That's what people do. That's what people are doing. That's how we got where we are now. And that is because you would rather vote for something that would hurt black people, even if it would mm -hmm. also hurt you. Yeah. Like just you know, you would rather say, okay, I don't want to have you know, anything better in my community, even if it'll be better for me, because mm -hmm. it'll also be better for black people. I remember my father told me a story about, um, and my dad is, is from Georgia, right? Okay. And he's from East Georgia, mm -hmm. way two hours outside of Atlanta. So, okay. okay. Um, if you, <laughs> they had a, a, a movie theater, mm -hmm. and because of integration, black people would be able to go to this movie theater too. Right. So guess what they did? They probably burnt that theater they down. They tore it down. <laughs> no, they tore it I knew down. it. I knew it. it. Down. You know what? I don't want to go to the movies if black people are going to go right. to the movies. So to spite myself, I'll just spite everybody. Nobody watch. Nobody. Movies. Nobody. Nobody watch. If black movies. people are coming, we don't need it. I mean, that sounds like an effective boycott. <laughs> I, ideally. And, but and, they can do that. Why don't we ever do that? That's going to bring up our next discipline. topic. It's discipline. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Are you done? Because I'm ready for the next topic. Are you done? Let's go. Are you done? I'm ready. You ready? Let's move it. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Brian Flores sues the NFL over racism. <sighs> Here we are again. Black History Month. Let's Here we are again with the damn NFL. <laughs> Oh, the, again! Oh, boy. Not only do they not give you the benefit of the doubt when you have CTE, because you're dumb anyway, right? <laughs> you are already dumb. So we can't say that it's because you got hit in the head 50 million times because you were dumb before. Not that. Not, oh, you know, I want to kneel because I want to bring... Fuck him, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now here we are again oh, in 2022 man. with this. Brian Flores, ex-NFL coach. He's not a coach anymore? He got fired. We'll get into that, too. Oh. Yeah, let, <laughs> I'm about to say, let's talk. We're gonna... Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. He got fired. Okay. Ex-NFL coach Brian Flores talk has sued the, the NFL talk in three. Mic, you got to talk to the mic. Oh, I'm not talking to the mic. <laughs> here we go. Ex-NFL coach Brian Flores has sued the NFL in three teams, the Dolphins, the Broncos, and the Giants, alleging discrimination regarding his interview process with Denver and New York and his firing last month by Miami. Oh, okay. Flores was fired this past January 10th, despite recording the Dolphins' first back-to-back -back winning season since 2003. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 10-6 in 2020 and 9-8 in 2021. Flores alleges the Dolphins owner, Stephen Ross, attempted to incentivize him to tank or purposely lose games shortly after he was hired in 2019, with Ross allegedly offering Flores $100,000 for every loss that season. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> Additionally, Flores alleged that Ross pres pressured him into recruiting a prominent quarterback. Who we now know is probably Tom Brady. <laughs> At the end of 2019 season, which the coach refused so as not to violate the NFL's tampering rules. Flores also alleged that the Giants interviewed him last month for their head coaching vacancy for no other reason than to com its compliance with the NFL's Rooney Rule, which requires teams to interview minority candidates for their opened positions. Flores alleges that a similar scenario occurred when he interviewed with the Broncos for their head coaching job in 2019. Flores says that the then Denver general manager, John Elway, with his drunk ass, <laughs> among others, arrived to the interview an hour late and hung over, alleging they had been drinking heavily the night before. Thank you, <laughs> potential employer, for me having practiced my speech and then you show up drunk or hung over. Oh, yeah. In the lawsuit, what is that? Wigder Law Wigder. LLP, the firm representing Flores says that the coach hopes to shine a light on the r racial injustices that take place inside the NFL. Among the <laughs> areas, 
Flora said he would like to see addressed. Ready? I'm, it's hilarious. Increase influence of black individuals in hiring. Increase the objectivity of hiring, terminating GMs, head coaches, and coordinators. Increase the number of black coordinators. Incentivize hiring, retention of black GMs, head coaches, and coordinators. Transparency of pay for GMs, head coaches, and coordinators. The lawsuit speaks unspecified damages from the NFL, which called the claims without merit. Are you serious? <laughs> so they say. So I'm gonna let y'all have it because you know I don't deal with it. I don't deal with it. You're not I dealing with deal it, Kimmy. <laughs> You're not deal dealing with it. it. I'm not dealing with it. You fed up, Kimmy. I'm fed up. Oh and, man. And, and you know, shout out to Jay Black. I understand. <laughs> your little team ain't never been there before. But they to the Super Bowl. She called your team little man. You are gonna let them talk to you like that, Jay Black? <laughs> I get it. And I'm happy for you. So I'm um, you off the hook. If you don't want to talk bad about the NFL this week, I get it. For all you that don't know, Jay Black is uh tried and true born uh he is in the Ohio. Only Bengals fan. Is that the name of him? Yeah, Cincinnati Bengals. He's the only Bengals fan in Atlanta. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dang, she's saying Atlanta, be. Jay Black. He has to be. She down on you right now, Jay no, Black. No, no, no. He is. Do you know any? <laughs> I don't. Right. <laughs> I mean, most Bengals fans is locals. Oh, it ain't yeah. like we a worldwide team. We ain't right, exactly. like the Cowboys. Yeah, they the they so. only ones with right. the Tony the Tiger outfit. <laughs> Go ahead, y'all. What you think? Jay what Black, you think man. Where this? do we start, Jay Black? You know, what happens to I mean, me? Like I said at the beginning, like, this is just, I look at this as just corporate. This is what goes on in corporate America. And that's not to defend the NFL. And I'm not saying that none of this is right. But. We intertwine. I feel like we're trying to intertwine this with two different issues. Mm. It's racism, of course, but I think this it, this is not along the same lines as what Kaepernick was protesting. Mm -hmm. Kaepernick, it was racism against him. That's just like that's work issues. You feel me? That's just inside that job, like the NFL, the inside that corporate. That's those mm -hmm. work issues. But honestly, like if we don't work for the NFL, what are we mad at the NFL about? Like, our fight was about, well, from my understanding, the whole Kaepernick thing was about police brutality. Mm -hmm. As a black person, my thing, my fight is to try to, you know, combat police brutality and some of the other issues that we deal with. Mm -hmm. This is, I don't work at the NFL. I don't mm -hmm. work for the NFL. Like, yeah. this is not my job. Like, so this is really not my fight. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at him for coming out and, you know, he's standing up for his rights as an employee. Uh-huh. So I don't think nothing he's doing is wrong. The things he's want he he puts out, and what I even say about you know us as black people, mm -hmm. he got the things that he want done. Like these are this is what I want. Yeah. Like us as black people, we just say oh we want this, we want that. He has a he has bullet points. This is what I want. Yeah. In return. Flores. So I'm not right mad. Away. He's handling this the right way. Yeah. Right away from yeah. the door. Yeah. Like he has. This is what I want to see. These are tangible things that I want to see. Yeah. So now, once y'all do the, I can, you know, if this happened, his fight is, you know, he's he's won a fight. Mm hmm. Hmm. I feel what you're saying, man. I I, I really do. Um. And, and I'll be the first to admit openly on this podcast that my my stance on the NFL has changed uh, over the last few years. Um. I I think everybody's seen me going pretty hard with the Colin Kaepernick situation. Um. But overall. Um, I started back watching football for, for some of the facts, for, for some of the things that Jay Black just said. Um, for, I think, three, almost four years, I didn't watch any NFL, like, you know. But I also sat back and was like, man, like, it really ain't no leader of this movement. Like, who's giving us points? Who's telling us which way to go? And at first, I seen a lot of people that were, okay, let, let's try to hop aboard this. And, and, and I feel like we came aboard. We heard the NFL's ratings. Like, I think that first year of the Super Bowl ratings were at an all-time low. Um, but over time, um, I'm kind of with, with Jay Black when it comes to this Brian Flores situation. Um, I'm not necessarily going to go as hard for him as I did for Kaepernick because I feel like it's two different situations. Mm -hmm. um, and once again, not – Saying, I, I said before the show that I'm more than happy that the NFL is getting sued. I think it's long overdue. I think somebody mm -hmm. had to do this. But at the same time, this isn't a new issue. Um, I, I think even even going back to the Rooney Rule, where they have to incentivize teams to to even interview, you know, black candidates. Um, so it, it's kind of like, how long are you going to knock on the door that doesn't want you? 
Um, and it's sad to say, but and, and it's not even at this point. I don't even think it's taking sides. But um, the, the issue with the NFL is that even the commissioner isn't the boss of the NFL. The commissioner, Roger Goodell, works for 32 team owners, and these 32 team owners, ideally, I won't say 30 because it, it's currently there is one black coach in the NFL. That's Mike Tomlin with the uh, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, and as you see, Brian Flores just had two back-to-back -back winning seasons. Two. And that's the first back-to-back -back winning season that the Dolphins have had since 2003. And they fired the man. You know what I'm saying? How do you do your job better than anybody else since in, in dang near 20 years now and get fired for it? You know what I'm saying? So I, I think you have to think that there's some merit to what this man is saying. The caveat for me is as I said before the show, why are you just now choosing to stand up? You know what I'm saying? And not to intertwine it with the Kaepernick situation, but it kind of goes hand in hand because there's overlap. Mm -hmm. when, when Kaepernick was like saying, yo guys, I need help. Will somebody stand up and verify these things for me? You like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody said nothing. And yeah, we're talking about police brutality, but that bled into a lot of other issues for black and brown minorities in the NFL and hiring practices was one of them. You know what I'm saying? Why is the NFL, you know, 70, dang near 80% black? They can find all the black players in the world, but you're telling me you can't find, you know, one coach. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's kind of like a, Or uh, why hasn't any of the players progressed into becoming a coach like they do in every yeah. other oh, they, sport? That's the thing. That's it, the problem. It, like, they're not getting that fair shot. Yeah. And like I say, that's just like a that's – a, that's a corporate job. Like, mm -hmm. think about how we just said the Rooney Rule. Mm-hmm. And shit, corporate American, what's the shit? And uh, diversity and inclusion, like they they added all that so mm -hmm. that certain black people can get certain roles, like so. That's why I say this is more corporate America. NFL mm -hmm. is a corporate co uh, company. That's mm -hmm. a corporate America company, and it's just a, a a system inside of a company. Let's take the NFL away. This is a huge company that has flaws and is you know so, inner flaws. So I'm just now reading about the Rooney Rule because mm -hmm. I don't care about them, but. So this is this is relatively new. In 2002, they came up with this. Yeah, well, I won't say it's new now because it's been around for twenty years. Okay, so but, ideally, yeah. But not in the '60s when you know we were out here getting hosed and mm -hmm. dogs nah, and all that. Mm -hmm. Like not then. Mm -hmm. So it was acceptable for 30, 40 years after diversity inclusion. Like when that, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. so. It took this long for you to even. This is modern history, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so in in the new millennia, 2002, mm -hmm. the year 2000. You know, this is when y'all decided that this needed to happen, right? Like, there, the NFL is so far behind mm -hmm. corporate America. I, I see what you're saying. That. Like, this I can is agree the with that. They are behind because right. they're ran by yeah. older white men. You feel me? These and, are 80. These are these guys that own these teams are Trump age. Right. You feel me? They, they're what? They Trump A's. Donald Trump A's. So and just think you that, got that, goes, that goes to my thing about politics. Like, people want to ignore it. They don't want to deal with it. They want to act like it's like we don't have no. But it literally seeps into every aspect of our lives. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Especially in Florida with Ron DeSantis. Mm hmm. And, and, and I think, like, once again, that's the issue I want to reiterate in the timing of this because that's what I'm saying. This isn't new. Like, we've known this is an issue in the NFL specifically, and, and we'll go, like, we'll say at least specifically since 2002. It's 2022. Like, you know, it's literally, it's 2022 now. That's 20 years later, and you're telling me after inserting the Rooney Rule, after, you know what I'm saying, all this stuff has happened that we still have issues. So, in my opinion, I almost think the Rooney Rule is an insult. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, Kim, you own this facility right here. You own it. Like, you, you, you the start and the stop of any decisions that happen here. If, if this business flies, you get all the credit. If it tanks and goes under, you get all the credit too. So how can you come in here while I'm running my business and you tell me who to hire? Now, I know that may hurt your feelings. You know what I'm saying? I know that that... You, you know what I'm saying? On the outside looking in, if I got all white workers in here and you black and you come in here and you don't feel comfortable shopping, I have the right to tell you to, you can go somewhere else, but I only hire, you know what I'm saying? The, now, that may be wrong, but it's my business. So for you to tell 32 business owners who to hire, I just don't, 
And First, like I say, we going through that. Like, let's even go to Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. There's it's the same fight for black people to get in tech. Mm-hmm. That's why they got black tech. Like, so that's why I keep saying like, I understand people's dislike for the NFL over over the what happened and all that. But this is a corporate thing. This is a this is what happens at jobs in America. Like, this is not there. And my thing was even back to the Kaepernick and. Why, was I, why I wasn't all the way on board to boycott the NFL because they have this huge platform. If Brian Flores was working for that, that startup league that was about the, the Canadian league and he was going through this, he probably would have still went through this, but it wouldn't have made national news. Mm-hmm. The NFL, the Super Bowl is next week. The Super Bowl is down to consider a holiday. A sport has a holiday. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how you, I mean, and you have to just leverage their reach. Like, um, at the end of the day. That's let me how just I give you it. a little bit of background about the Rooney Rule. Because I didn't really know much about it. Mm-hmm. It was created as a reaction to the 2002 firing of head coaches Tony Dungy of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Dennis Green of the Minnesota Vikings, and at a time when Dungy had a winning record and Green had just had his first losing season in 10 years, to your point, Dom. Yep. Shortly afterwards, the U.S. Civil Rights Attorney Cyrus Mern, si- no, Cyrus Murray, I don't know how to say that last name, mm-hmm. and Johnny Cochran, we all know who that is, right? Mm-hmm. Released a study. So they did a study showing, so this has been proven, black head coaches, despite winning a higher percentage of games, were less likely to be hired and more likely to be fired than their white counterparts. So it's mm. been proven. Yeah. And, and, and like, I think even so a casual been, NFL so that, fan you know, see that. Yeah. That'll, that, that's not a debatable topic anymore. For God's sake, the man just got fired after two winning seasons. You right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Former NFL players Kellen Wilson and John Wooten then put together an affinity group of minority scouts, coaches, and front office personnel to advocate for the rules creation. So, it was it was put in place to ensure that minority coaches, especially African Americans, would be considered for high level coaching positions. So you uh, and, and so you, I mean, and we see that in other other companies. Mm-hmm. I just I just pull something up. It's something called uh, racial quota. Mm-hmm. So every job is every company is required mm-hmm. that. So that's the same mm-hmm. thing essentially, and yeah, that's but all they I'm to saying. Create their own. Yeah. yeah, there's just the Rooney room. Like that's why I say this is a corporate America thing more than mm-hmm. you know. This is an intern. This is a problem within this company. This is not a a black people fight in a sense. Mm-hmm. It is if I'm trying to work for the NFL, but if I'm not well, trying to work for the NFL, when, it's not so, my fight. So we're, it is if all of your if the majority of your employees are black. But we right, it's not our fight. We don't work for the NFL, and that's why <laughs> I don't understand. Why we? And this, why do we care so much? Like, well, why are we so invested? Yeah, I, I, I can't say. You, I, mean, I like so it from. A, I like it from an entertainment standpoint. Just but like I listen so to music. Deep, like someone else did that to me. Someone else did that to me, and they compared the NFL to music. No, I look. I'm saying entertainment. Well, it's just entertainment. Well, entertainment. Me. I'll say this. I, I I feel like you can't take the why do we uh, care so much approach. Um, personally speaking, I have friends in the NFL. Like, you know what I'm saying? I have uh, friends on coaching staffs. I have people that I care about that are in the NFL. So, ideally, like, once again, like, we had a conversation about housing. All the situations going to be different. But also, like, once again, I got friends in the NFL right now. If I need something for a community or if I need some, you know what I'm saying, it, it, it's not another entity in America that makes as many instant black millionaires. So... I understand why things are like they are in a sense because like it's a miracle like we grow up on the pull yourself up by the bootstraps every man for himself blah 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 when ideally they teach us that because they know we're much stronger together and if we ever realize that things will change so when it comes to the NFL and you have you know once again as I said 80% black players um, and, and it's kind of like out of all those 32 teams, you know what I'm saying, we have one, currently we have one black head coach. Um, and that may change soon because I, I think with all this, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some people not going to want to deal they, with. They in the process of hiring now. Like yeah. the, the Chiefs, his, the, he, the, the officer coordinator, he just did an interview. Yeah. But even to that point of you saying you got friends in the NFL, mm-hmm. I'm – Almost positive you got friends that work in corporate America. Exactly. How many owners, how many black owners of, how many black McDonald's owners do we have? Mm-hmm. Like, let's go across the board. Like, if we're going to put this energy but out there, I, let's I, spread this energy 
across the board for black people. But I, I, think, I think that fight is there for black people all across America. And that's the thing I want people to realize. Black people aren't even asking to, you know what I'm saying, be on an equal level on a lot. We're asking for equity. If we're 13% of the population, give me 13% of this. Like, you know what I'm saying? We, we ain't coming in asking for 100% of nothing. Like, we just want the, this, the population to reflect the segment that we are. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't expect for there to be, you know what I'm saying, 10 million black people owning, you know what I'm saying, things that, you know, in, in Mississippi, because it ain't even 10 million black people there. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, if it's, if, if, if it's 10 million people here, like in this city, and black people are 30% of them, we need 30% of equity in whatever we're doing in this city. Yeah, I think that's fair. But, once again, going back to the NFL, you have 80% of black players, you know what I'm saying? Most time, when, when players retire, we see them go one or two ways. They either go into entertainment and commentate, or they want to go to coaching. You know what I'm saying? I know tons of players that retire, it's easy for them to go into the entertainment sector, but why is it so hard for them to get into coaching? I, 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 mean, don't, I, I and, think and, that's false, though. Because but, I think maybe the head, like the head coach, but... Everybody but, I know that I went to college with, Ohio State, that didn't make it to the NFL, they're coaches. They are. But they're what I'm saying coaches. is you're negating part of it. Players, because NFL all of them are players. on staffs, but it's a glass ceiling there. That's, I'm only going to let you be a coordinator. But you that's, in, that, only but gonna, that's it, in any job is what I'm trying to say. But though. what I'm saying <laughs> is it shouldn't be that way. Like, if, if Jay Black, if, if, if you're a black guy, you know what I'm saying, and I'm interviewing, I need a, 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 a video guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I know you good as hell. I know you're the best man for the job. Now, this dude that ain't been doing camp work for but four months, like, you know what I'm saying, walks in, interviews, you know what I'm saying. He looks how America looks for the most part. Mm -hmm. And I hire him because uh, this is, you know what I'm saying. He's white. He fits what I'm looking for. Yeah. So, and, so and let me I, ask you this. I didn't take the most talented person. But once again, it was still a choice that had to be made. And I made that choice. And as a business owner, I can't do nothing but – Respect it because it's your business. If mm -hmm. I wanted to make that decision, I'll start my own business and I'll hire who I want. And let me ask you this on the flip side, because you're a business owner as well. I am. We've had talks before that you you your goal is to hire black people. Mm -hmm. So what if that same situation presents to you? It's a black kid, he has the potential, you know that, mm -hmm. but it's this white kid that comes in and he has all the qualifications. Mm -hmm. Which way are you gonna go? And for me, honestly, because you're going I, black, right? I, I mean, me personally, I'm gonna go black. And, 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 I've, <laughs> and I've said that, and I'll stand on it, like you know. So what you got to understand where they're I, coming I, from. And, and that's what I'm saying. I said I did initially, yeah. like, and that's why I said you're not gonna see me go as hard for Brian Flores as I went for Colin yeah. Kaepernick. So let's just put that on the record, like we agree there. But what I'm saying is, if you are the best man for the job, like I walked in the door and known I'm the best man for the job, and I got it. like you know what I'm saying. I ain't flip over no tables. I ain't sue nobody. I ain't do none of that. It's kind of like Dominic is going to have to figure out how Dominic is going to survive no matter what. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like in today's America, black people are used to being in that situation. They're used to being in that stance. And I truly feel like we're going to be all right. But until we get over the mindset that we are, I don't want to say come the wrong way, but it's some areas we got to quit begging to be in. Like we we got something. We got to find alternatives to. I love what Deion Sanders is doing for HBCUs now. And see, that's another but, route. And, yeah, and, they and, can go to HBCU route. And, Why and, not go back to our community? Like that. That's and, the thing. And, like, and that's what I want to see. You are going to the NFL. Be, but but you can go to an HBCU and do the same thing. Like Deion Sanders is doing. If you want to be a head coach, it's options thing. for that. The on the, the NFL is it's the most lucrative option. But come on, it's like, man, what do and, you really want? And, like, right. And college right, coaching, right. college coaches ideally get paid more yeah. than NFL coaches. But I mean, as far in as big the, programs. Yeah, as far um, as the players are concerned, once you've hit the age where you don't want to play anymore, it would be nice to be able to graduate to that level. But. And I think I, as far as from the, and I don't I know, mean, I'm not you, a player, but you, from a player standpoint, I think because. Work wise, they're low level employees mm -hmm. in the NFL. They're low level employees. Yeah. They're, they're entry level employees essentially. All right. Players. Yeah, the players. Yeah. yeah. So their job, they're those. not really worried about like if I'm an entry level person at McDonald's. When I worked at McDonald's, I didn't give a fuck about management. 
Mm. I didn't care what was going on with that. So that's why they're not fighting for that. But I think they don't the, care the, for the that. problem with comparing all these NFL issues with corporate America issues is that you could leave your job at XYZ because of, you know, whatever, and go work at whatever. But with the NFL, there is nowhere else for you to go. There really? is. It's Where? college. College. No, no, no. I mean, as far as like the players, the coaches. Just like if I leave owners. my job, if I leave McDonald's, I can go work at Best Buy. Work Those else. are two different industries. You just, you just want the NFL is so just so lucrative. The NFL players. They just might have to find a regular job. Like they can get into real estate. They just might not be able to play football. Like if they they, if it's that big though. of a problem, you have to leave. Like if I'm working in McDonald's and I hate this fast food industry, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna go to the tourism yeah. industry. Like that's just it's work at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, that, that, it's that's work. Yeah, <laughs> that's like yeah. coming it's to work. Job. Job. Like, yeah. That's, yeah. But people look at it as bigger than what it is. Right. Like, is that, this is just a corporation. Yeah. The NFL is no different than McDonald's. That's true. Yeah. That's all it is. And when people look at it like that, it's like, oh, this shit fucked up across the board. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm choosing this this one because they're the biggest. Mm-hmm. But when you they pick on Jeff Bezos because he got the most money. Uh-huh. So but, when I see <laughs> when I see people raising their kids to play football, they really raise their kids to play football. Like they don't because it's a way out. Like we we was yeah. just saying, like yeah. that's an easy way out. Mm-hmm. Like you feel once me? again, if you poor. What's the two ways out? Sports and entertainment. Sports and entertainment and And the military. And military. And the military. Them the two ways you get out the hood. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everything else you hoping for. You know if I'm good at football or basketball or baseball, somebody going to pay me attention because entertainment is a premium in this country. Not not doctors, not teachers, not any of it. The things we need, we don't care nothing about. But being entertained. Super Bowl Sunday. Nobody go go to work on Monday because they hung over from partying and staying up late watching the game. Like that's the stuff in America that we care yeah, about. We care. That's why people like Trump because he was entertaining. Like we thrive mm-hmm. off entertainment. Like yeah. at the end of the day, and, and that's why you see so many <laughs> entertainers going. That's why uh, the Terminator gets to be the the governor, the governor. of California. Ronald Reagan that, was an actor. Yeah, that's why in Atlanta actor. the right. rappers are influencing politics. Yeah, like, yeah. it's yeah. entertainment. You know so you got to put that together and realize that, like Jay Black say, it's not just in this area. Like it's across the board. It really is. We just don't always view it like that. But it, 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 if you work here and every day you come to work, I punch you in the stomach, and you okay with getting punched in the stomach for that chick, who's to blame? Like you know what I'm saying? You have your right mind. You got the ability to think. You have, you know what I'm saying, the opportunity to build other skill sets to go to other industries, but you choose to be comfortable. And you have enough money to save up for a year right. and go learn something and but do something But you got to mentally be there. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's the thing. And I can't, I, like, again, growing up, I had friends. I see the potential in you. And I'm getting mad when you ain't tapping in your potential. And it's down there draining my energy. And I got yeah, to the point to it. I'm not about yeah. to be mad. Yeah, no, right. I'm not about to fight for fight for your. I'm not about to fight, fight your you. fight right. for you if you don't want to fight your fight. Right. right. I'm gonna get back if you, you want to fight your you fight. Want. Right. Again, because if when the Kaepernick stuff happened, I was on board. And if the players would have boycotted the NFL, I'm with you because this is your fight. I'm following your league. Yeah, I yeah, can't lead your fight. Right. Like so, I'm gonna kick it too. Like yeah. I mean, I, I think. Well, I you know how I feel about it. You know, I don't even. The NFL is like way. I'm not even. Yeah. Because as a black woman, I know a lot of black women are into NFL football or whatever. But to fight and and to be involved in things that are, um, you know, to to benefit or to have people look at black men in a different perspective. Mm-hmm. And then to have black men supporting this thing that really it goes against everything that we're trying to make people see, and, and you know what I mean, like everything that we know is right, it makes me mad mm-hmm. because I don't like that. I I feel more respect for for you than for you. Like we do it too, you know. Like in certain songs, certain music we support, and it degrades black women. And if mm-hmm. a black man was like, I don't like when I see you, like I would get that. Shut up, it's just a song. Let me talk. No, I wouldn't say that. I would, I would understand. That's what a lot of people would say though. Yeah, yeah, no, but I would women, understand. Women, men need to mind, get out of women's business. Yeah, no, I would, I would understand. <laughs> I would understand. That don't mean I'm going to stop or whatever, but it would, it would make me think like, damn, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's all I say. That's all I say. Because I see how hard y'all go yeah. for football. It's not like, oh, it's just entertainment. 
Because just entertainment means I'm going to turn it off at some point. Mm -hmm. But it never gets turned off. You dedicate a whole day of a week yeah. to this. Entertainment, entertainment never cut off never. You, I listen to music every day. You need it. You, like, I listen to that every day. Like You can listen to music and still do other you stuff. Can, but, you but can have sports out. on and still do. When you go to a sports bar, you don't even hear the shit. What, what, <laughs> what do you like to do, Kim? Like, how do you unwind? I don't think I do. Yeah. And that's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> That's an <laughs> issue, though. That's an issue. I nah, I can I say do. no. I, I would say if I'm on the outside looking in, if I had to, if if you ask me what I feel like you do to unwind, I definitely feel like it has to do with music. But you go to yeah. concerts, yeah, festivals, yeah. travel. Yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah. you do to unwind. Yeah. So I mean, that's what you like to do. Yeah. And and, and with with that being said, because you 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 a hip hop head. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying, yeah. you love so. Say for instance, like you know. But I feel the, like it being in hip hop is supporting black culture. You're right. You're you feel what I'm saying right. because yeah. that is that is hip hop is inherently. So is, is, is working a corporate American job supporting black culture? But I don't promote no, right. my job. But you work there. I though. don't. Right, but I don't so go you, on social I, media and be like, I love my my company, this company, you like like people. Do you don't have to because every day you go to work, you you show them you love them because you bring in money. <laughs> You're right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't need you to get on the uh, top of the building and scream, oh, I love this company because you come to work every day. That to me. That's all. As an owner, that's all I want. Like you know, what I'm saying yeah. you're doing exactly what I need you to do. I can do my own marketing. That's yeah. why the company is where it is today. So I think you have to think about things in that same light when you just walk into the world. Like you know, what I'm saying because I yeah. always tell people everything is a brand. Live hip hop daily. Everything. Live hip hop daily jams. Like you know, what I'm saying. So Mississippi. Like you know, what I'm saying like Trillmonger, Apple. Like you know, what I'm saying. His hat got a logo on it. Like everything is labeled. Everything you is know marketed. What? That's true. So you have to, you know what I'm saying, realize when you are, even when you're in a store buying clothes, like your favorite ketchup might be Heinz. Like, you know what I'm saying? So you go in the store and that's specifically what you get, even though there are maybe five or six other brands on that shelf. Like, you know what I'm saying? So you go in with a very, very specific, yeah, yeah, very, very specific thing and what you want. And these companies do the same thing. They have very, very specific guidelines on who they want to hire. They have very specific guidelines on how they want to operate. And they have very specific, e even methods of getting your money. They, they run a commercial at a certain time. Emails. Yeah, if you if you at home doing 1 o'clock during the day, the commercial is going to reflect that. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're not going to be the same commercial that's on at 8 o'clock at night. So everything is very meticulously done when it comes to these things well so I just, you have to realize that that works on the good side of things but that that happens on the bad side of things also when it comes to hiring when it comes to marketing when it comes to companies reflecting the the, the people that work for them everything don't be on the up and up <laughs> yeah and diversity and inclusion is something that companies have embraced very recently mm -hmm. and um, but I see a lot of companies doing seriously doing it and you know some people performatively mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> all i'm gonna say is this if the players if the people in the nfl want to boycott the nfl i'm with it but let's start next season because my team makes it <laughs> for the first time in my life and i just want to let me just enjoy this like i just want to enjoy like, this like, is the camera on thing. me is the camera on me can you put the just camera on me just let me enjoy this like is the camera on me damn a man it. finally gets his happiness in his life <laughs> Am I, is and the a camera, woman steps on it. Is, 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 is the, the camera this is on the me? Epitome of, the epitome of America. This is America for you people. This is the, this is the struggle of a black man in America. Whenever is the we find happiness, me? is the camera on me? <laughs> a woman comes and shut it down. Is the camera on you right now? <laughs> no, I don't have one on me. Is it on me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Was that in focus? Full focus. Full focus. Connecting the daughters, whatever our people are called, <laughs> this is what is happens that what to black called? men connecting in America. The daughters, so my people that's connectors. listening outside of America, this is how black men in America is treated. We are not allowed to have joy. <laughs> if we have joy, it's racist. And <laughs> We're going to have therapists on the next episode to help us get through these if situations. If people that are in America, we don't know what are their names. Dot connectors. That's what your names are. Dot connectors. Look at my reaction to what he just said. He just left the set. He's, He's gone. gone. <laughs> he walked off. 
I don't even know if I could end the show right now because he's not even here. <laughs> he's not. Oh, so, um, you know, we can just talk until he comes back because I don't have anything else to say. Commercial moment. So Mississippi. Oh, um, you know what? Candle. I did not do that. <laughs> and this one up here is the one I want to smell because I don't know if I, if I smell this one. This episode has been brought to you by So Mississippi Candles. And the last one was too, but I forgot to say it. So <laughs> this one is cinnamon and vanilla. Yeah. Hey. This smells good. Yeah, we are. Because Jay Black walked away and I didn't know how to end it because I didn't know if the camera was still rolling. So thank you guys for watching us. Check us out at CTZ underscore ATL on Instagram. Oh, so Mississippi Candles, sea salt and orchid. This is new. But check it out. Oh. And also guys, right now we we oh, have wait, a special going on on so many. Oh, this one smells really. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this smells really good. Come on, Kimiko. But but right now we got a special going on until uh, Valentine's Day. So until February fifteenth, it's fourteen percent off all candles. Ooh. Use code V Day fourteen. Yo, at I so want to Mississippi dot com. I want to suggest dot com. Sea salt and orchid, and I think I'm gonna put this in my purse. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I'll let you smell it first, though. So make sure you guys check us out. Um, oh. Say hi to Kimiko. Kimiko hey, is on the set. And so, I'm a connoisseur on awesome all things smells. Stuff. And so check out our, our um, <laughs> sister show. You know, there was something I saw, and I wanted to tell it to you, but I forgot. So never mind. But um, <laughs> check out the shows on Innovative Black Station. We are going to wrap it up. Make sure you follow us, CTZ underscore ATL. Kimiko, you want to tell them about you guys' show? And don't forget to uh, check out Gamify Podcast, all about gaming, arts, music, esports, and film. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace.